Dang it. We're getting ready to put the crankshaft in, but there's a really important operation that we got to perform before we do that. And that would be the installation of the rear main seal. Now, we're going to need some special things in order to make that happen. The first thing is a piece of pipe or a large socket or something that we can use to roll the seal into its groove. The other thing that we need, and this is really important, this is the sizing tool. And this part right here fits in the bearing, uh, where the bearing would go on the rear main cap. And this part right here is the part that actually is the size that we need in order to, to have the, the seal be the proper dimension. So it's going to go in the engine like this right here. Okay. And as we put the cap on, it's going gonna, it's gonna to sort of mash the, the seal into position. Now, also, what we need is this stuff right here. Uh, this is what I use. They, they rec recommend a jointing compound of some kind to go in the groove before you put the seal in. I use red Loctite. Some people say that's not a good idea, but it's been working for me. So, what you do, and this is what a seal half looks like before you install it. I kind of got a head start on the process here. In fact, I already have the other half in the bearing cap, the main bearing cap, already. Okay, so we got that in position here, ready to be installed. Now, what you do first of all is you place the seal half in the groove after you put a little red Loctite in it. And then what you do is you work it back and forth, trying to maintain the same dimension on both sides because this seal is, the length of it is really, really close to what it's going to have to, what it's going to be when it's actually sized properly. So you sort of work your way toward the center and you don't want to push really, really hard, but that's what we're going to have right there. Now, <clears throat> in the interests of maybe this is all going to work out size wise in the end i'm going to take a straight edge razor blade and trim it a little bit angle the edges somewhat so that there's a reduced possibility that it's going to squeeze out in between the block and the bearing. This is going to take a while, but I think it's important. Try not to damage the the uh, bearing saddle in the block. I'm doing this a lot faster than I normally do. And I've cut myself. Great. All right. Well, sacrifices have to be made. Okay. That looks pretty good. In fact, that looks real good. Okay, <clears throat> so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to install the bearing substitute and the seal sizing tool like this. And then we're going to take the main bearing cap, put it over the top like that, and 
I'm going to install the washers. I've oiled all the fasteners. Or all the threads. And the nuts. Previously. So what we're going to do now is we're going to install the cap just as we would if we were actually installing the crankshaft. And right there. Okay. It's one of the uh, things that surprised me about this engine when I was working on the first one. I was, before I took it apart, I was trying to think of ways to make it more robust for high performance use before I even pulled the pan off and pull the pan off and there's four bolt means front to back and there's six bolts on the rear cap. So that was one thing I didn't have to worry about. Okay. Kind of trade off from one side to the other because you are squeezing something in between here. Okay. And we use the the uh, final torque specs to size the seal just as we would if uh, we were installing the crankshaft. So we're gonna let that sit for a while. Now at this point, what you ought to be able to do is you ought to be able to grab a hold of this handle right here, and you ought to be able to easily turn this seal. So there it is. Now this tool, by the way, uh, costs about $150 and I bought this one um, at Terry's Jaguar Parts, um, a, a company here in the U.S. So we're going to let this sit a while and once it um, once it sets, we'll or make sure that the uh, the uh, Loctite is set. We'll take it apart and inspect it, and then we'll put the crankshaft in. At this point, what I've done is I've installed all the caps, torqued them to spec, did all the measurements uh, front to rear in terms of the diameter of the bearing, and I'm going to take the crankshaft journal diameters, subtract them from the bearing diameters, and that'll give us our clearance, and all of them look really good at this point, so, or at least in spec. Now, as I was editing this video, it became clear that I did not have a real good ending and I had omitted a few steps, mainly installing the bearing caps in the block over the crankshaft, the final assembly. So that's what we're going to do now.
Now what you see here is a set of bearing caps that I just grabbed off of a block in the shed and these are in no way the level of cleanliness that they would need to be in order to go in a block, but we're just using this for illustrative purposes. Now you see that I have them numbered one through seven. Clearly some of them are different enough where you really don't have to do that to all of them, but what the heck, that's what I do. Like number one, for example, you can see that you got the boss there. Uh, machined into it for the oil pump to nest in. Number four is clearly wider than the rest of them. And this is the one where the thrust bearings go in. And also number seven, you really can't confuse that for anything else. Okay, so once you've got the bearings installed in the block itself, in the bearing saddles, what you would do at this point is to take some assembly lube, which I use Clevite assembly lube. And uh, you also do the same thing for the crankshaft and you set the crankshaft in the block as I already showed you. Prior to this, we have already installed the seal in number seven here. So we don't have to do that again at this point. So what we're gonna do then is we would take the bearing shells, install them in the bearing caps, and set those on the block. Now, <clears throat> it's really important that you put these back in the order that they came out. Like I said, one, four, and seven, they really can't be mistaken for anything else, but two, three, five, and six can be because they are, uh, from outward appearances, identical. But the thing you gotta remember is that all of these were bolted in place and torqued prior to the main journals being, being a line board. And once it's been a line board, these things, two, three, five, and six, they need, you can't be swapping them back and forth because there's going to be a little bit of offset between the half of the bearing salad, saddle in the block and the half that is in the cap. So, so it's really important that you get these back in. Now, in terms of which way do they go in like this, there's only one way it can go because these holes are uh, offset a little bit in one direction. So you try to put this cap in this way, what happens is it contacts the, the side of the block and it won't go down any further. So that's pretty easy. But again, two, three, and five, and six, they gotta go in that block the way they came out. Otherwise, what happens is, even if it's just a thousandth of an inch off, that's gonna close up your clearances and cause bearing failure. So important thing to remember. Now in terms of Torquing these together, these big ones, the nuts that go on the studs in the block have a torque spec of 62 foot-pounds, whereas the little ones have a spec of 28. Okay, you want to you want to tighten these down evenly. You don't want to start at one side 28, 62, 62, 28. So what I do is I tighten the two big ones to 30 foot-pounds. Then I torque the little ones to their final torque spec of 28, and then I go back and do these two um, at, uh, at 62 foot-pounds, finish those up. So I think in that way, you really do a good job of tightening the, these down evenly. <clears throat> the big one in the back, number seven, you've got not only the same four that you have in the others, but you also have these two on the back, so you can't forget about those. And that's basically it, as long as you lubed it properly and you've got, oh, one other thing, before you put the nuts on the studs, what you want to do is use engine oil to uh, lubricate them because you don't want to have some of your torque being consumed by friction between the nuts and the, um, and the threads on the studs. And that's true of any fastener that needs to be torqued to a specific value, you, you have to use lubrication on the threads. So, there you go, your crankshaft's in. Time to move on to something else. It occurred to me that I omitted a fairly important piece of information, and that has to do with these little things right here. Now these things are the thrust bearings for the crankshaft. You can see that they have a steel backing on the back side, and a copper-like bearing surface on this side. And their function is to control the fore and aft movement of the crankshaft in the crankcase. 
Now the way that these things are positioned, and unfortunately I don't have an engine apart right now, I sort of came upon this after I had both engines together, but they sit on both sides of the number four bearing saddle in the block. So imagine that the block is upside down and these are in that position. There's machine bosses on both sides of that. The bearing cap is up on top here where my fingers are twiddling away here and it keeps them from falling out. The crankshaft and the number four bearing boss traps them fore and aft. And so uh, in that way, these things are retained and the crankshaft is controlled. And there's fairly, I don't recall the exact specification for crankshaft end plate, two to six thousandths or something like that. I'd have to look it up. I don't remember stuff off the top of my head like I used to. But at any rate, uh, these things have to be in there. Now, it's easy to lose these things. Um, these things tend to, when you pull the crankshaft out, they can either stick to the sides of the number four bearing saddle in the block, or they can stay stuck to the crankshaft. You need to find these things when you pull the, pull the crankshaft out, because you take the engine out uh, on your engine stand out to pressure wash it, and you can blow them into the grass and you never see them again. You never miss them because you didn't know they were there. Um, the problem with losing these things is that it's really, really hard to find them these days. You can find bearings, standard size bearings, and 10 thousandths under bearings, but uh, uh, these things are, are very, very difficult to find. Uh, and they've got to be in there also. Uh, the, um, one of your Worst days is going to be when you get your engine together and you find these two things laying on the bench. You forgot to put them in. Well, okay, now you got to take the engine apart to put those in. I mean, you can't just put them on the shelf and, well, we'll get it next time because that crankshaft is going to move, I don't know, 16th of an inch back and forth and it's going to be banging up against the aluminum uh, bearing saddle and bearing number four. So that would be a bad thing. Um, about a month ago, there was uh, a guy that posted on one of the Facebook Jaguar enthusiast pages, and he had a picture of his oil pan that he'd taken off to reseal it. And there's a couple of these in the bottom of the pan, and one of them had been twisted like 90 degrees. And the question was, is this normal, and where do they belong? Um, no, this isn't normal, and they belong in the block. What happened here is the last guy that did the engine work on the bottom end forgot to do it and threw them in the pan and twisted one up to make it look like some sort of event happened for these things to drop out. Don't be that guy.